Welcome to the Fangled Cast, brought to you by Fangled Technologies, where we help you convert every person your company touches into a voracious advocate for your brand. Well, welcome back to a special edition of the Fangled Cast today. This this is a, a an issue that holds dear to me. I, I think that there's a huge a huge level of mythology and strangeness that exists, and people miss the opportunity to hire military veterans in the United States for important jobs. And and since since COVID started and I've been involved in these networking groups, I've become friends with a guy that I, I really like and I think that he's got great insight. So just to qualify before I introduce you to, to my friend Ron, I gathered questions from people. So before people send me notes and tell me that I'm a monster and otherwise, I asked a bunch of business professionals what do you think the biases are that prevent companies from hiring veterans to work in their company? So the questions that I'm asking are not my questions. They're questions that I gathered from a bunch of people who will remain nameless. So before we get started, I want to introduce you to Lieutenant Commander Retired Ron Higgs from the Navy. And if you could tell us a little bit about yourself, Ron, I, I really appreciate you coming on today. Great, Andrew, thank you very much for inviting me. It's a pleasure to talk with you and about this subject. So as you mentioned, I'm Ron Hicks. I spent 24 years total in the, in the Navy. I'm a graduate of the US Naval Academy. After the Naval Academy, I went to flight school uh, to become a Naval flight officer. I spent uh, my career flying airplanes and doing program management and acquisition until I retired. And what are you doing now that you've retired, Ron? Well, right now I am one of the many that's unemployed due to COVID, but I am uh, doing some work in self-employment as a consultant and a fractional chief operating officer until I can find something more permanent. You know, so many people talk about the, the, the sort of the patriotic side of, of wanting to hire vets. I wanna take, it, take the patriotic part of it out of, the cons, out of the discussion because we all feel that way. That if we can help these guys that have served their country, that's a great thing to do. I, I want to talk more about the selfish side of hiring vets and why people who have that military training are such a huge asset to companies. And I think to do that, we've got to break some of the myths. And, and the most common thing that I've heard in this, this questioning that comes out, and I, I'm hoping you can comment on this, I don't want to hire a vet to work in my place because there's machines that make a lot of noise. And I know these guys are just one click, one noise away from a post-traumatic stress uh, occurrence to happen in my factory. T tell, tell me what you think when you, when you hear that, besides how insulting that is. Well, I mean, the hairs in the back of my neck just stood up because that, that is just so uh, ignorant, I guess is the word I'll use now. A good word. But um, I think a lot of that is fueled by the Hollywood machine. Right? So a lot of people get their ideas of what the military is and what it's like based on what they've seen in the movies or on TV. And that's not true, right? But the movies portray veterans, a lot of them, as either an indestructible hero or someone who's one loud noise away uh, from, from going nuts. So I, I think Hollywood fuels a lot of that in plain old ignorance, right? Lack of contact with veterans, maybe not having any deep, meaningful relationships or even discussions with veterans, maybe no veterans in their family or anything like that. I think that anyone who would make a statement like that clearly has not had a lot of veterans in their circle. Yeah. Now, or they seen those things could be true, right? There, there are some. Uh, I, I don't want to discount the fact that we do have veterans that PT that have PTSD and and need help, but those are few compared to the number of veterans that are out. Yeah, I every time I hear that, and I ask the question to people who, who who brought that up, and I said, how much, how many movies do you watch? Do you really think that every vet who comes home is is a Rocky? I'm not a Rocky, a, a Rambo waiting, <laughs> waiting to assault the town. And it's no, no, but I, I, I know it's true. Everybody knows a guy, but the data doesn't support it. Um, well, not at all, because other, again, sorry, the, the other part of that that I wanted, I wanted to ask you that sort of fits into it is, is also this idea that I, I don't want someone that has to be told what to do 
you know, the yes sir, no sir, as if every day in the military, people only react as if they're dealing with a drill sergeant. Well, so, so first, let me finish asking, asking the first one. Again, sure. loud noises, right? That doesn't make any sense because we have veteran doctors, veteran nurses, you know, veteran lawyers, veteran mechanics. You know, we've got veterans who, who sit in, in closed, dark rooms and stare at computers all the time. Yeah. Right? So, yep. And there are no loud noises there, right? So the breadth of uh, vocations that veterans have, you know, is almost endless. The other thing that you say, right, again, more Hollywood stuff. Veterans don't sit around and wait and be told what to do. And if you think about way back a long time ago when we didn't have communications, when we didn't have radios, we didn't have the internet, we didn't have things, there are people out, there are veterans, Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, out everywhere. Okay, maybe not the Air Force. Um, out in all these places where no one, you know, sort of that, you know, any sort of headquarters could communicate with them. If you're out on the open ocean on a Navy ship, if you're underwater on a Navy submarine, are you waiting for orders or have you been equipped and or trained to, to, to display independent thought, right? And be able to take care and execute your mission as you see fit. That's the key. What, what you just said there is, is one of the main reasons why I think Hiring a vet. I'm going I'm to speak from a very selfish point. So business owner, I need to hire an employee and I know that I'm going to have to train them with a certain set of skills. Somebody decided to let my government train these people with decision making, strength, power and otherwise that would take me years to train an employee to be able to do. So so when 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 I think of, of guys in, in the military, even the ones that sort of fall under that, I'm under, I'm under command, I'm under orders, and now they're alone, and decisions have to be made, and lives are on the line, and they've been trained to make life and death experiences, or, or decisions, I should say. Maybe those guys have the right training to make the kind of decisions that I need in my organization when life and death aren't on the line. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll agree with you and then, and then present you with this. How often do things go according to plan, no matter what you're doing? So there's that saying, right? No battle plan, military saying, no battle, battle plan survives first contact with the enemy. So you need people who are capable of reacting in emergency situations and knowing what to do when things do not go as planned. And I'll just bring it back to Mike Tyson, who said, you know, everybody has a plan until they get punched in the face, yeah. right? So again, you, I don't think any time or very few times in my career has anything ever going gone according to plan, yeah. right? And so I think you should value people who can react and who are trained to, to act when things don't go according to plan and who won't freeze and not do anything if things don't according. Go according to plan. It was it was funny about I want to say about four years ago I was involved as one of the people in an interview interviewing candidates, and a fellow came in who was who had just finished his his military duty in the army, and the questions came up about you know what how, what kind of action things did you, which is completely inappropriate for a job interview anyhow the type of action somebody saw in in the theater and the guy says I used the most dangerous weapon that the military had, and we were everybody was like oh what what was it. Yeah, the potato peeler. I worked in the kitchen. I ran, I ran the kitchen and I fed 2,000 people a day. That was my job in the military. And by the way, combat was bad in Virginia where I was based. And that was, that was his response to the silly question. And, and immediately he started talking about the kinds of training that he had, how, how in his team where they all came together to plan the meal and made sure that everything happened, they were a manufacturing facility of quality food for for the people in at the base. Right. Let's take, I'm going to take that a step further. Please. So in the Navy, right, we were underway on ships, right? And then you, you, we have this thing called underway replenishment where another ship will come up alongside the carrier or whatever other ship it is and it'll resupply it. You think those guys know what they're getting? Because those supplies are, those supplies are dependent upon where you are in the world. So if you're in the Mediterranean and the supply ship goes to Spain, goes to Greece, goes to Turkey or someplace else to resupply, then the supplies that you're getting 
could be coming from those places and they're going to be different every time. Now, if you're in the Pacific, you know, wherever you get the point or in the Indian Ocean, you get the point that those people have to plan those meals, sometimes not knowing what they're going to get, you know, until the supply ship comes. And when the supply ship comes, they've got some things from all these different countries like, OK, we got to we got to plan our meals with this. Right. So it's a constant constantly changing. And so it's something that you can't predict and can't order ahead of time. Yeah. And, and you know, when, when we look at, at hiring employees, in, especially in my company and, and when I'm, I'm aiding companies in their search, <clears throat> one of the things that we, we look for, key, key components of the human being. We like curious people. We like creative people. We like tenacious people. And we like people who know how to get along in a community. How, how could that not be? a recently re retired or, or someone who's completed their duty, whatever term you want to use. Those are all the things that our vets are trained and have lived before, before they complete their tour of duty or their time, their time in, the, in the force. Well, I, I will tell you, I think that most vets understand service above self, right? Because at some point you've, you've, you've signed up to trade your life you know, for your country if necessary, right? So that's that understanding of service above self and serving a greater cause. And every veteran knows what the mission is. The mission is support and defend the Constitution of the United States, right? We take an oath to do that. So you know that that person is already a person who values service above self. And then they're also a person that is biased towards that mission, right? Because what you do would you know, that independent thought we we're talking about, right? Mm -hmm. Veterans understand the mission, right? So that mission is, again, support and defend the Constitution of the United States. How am I going to do that? I, my bias will be to do just that. And anything that I do in the company will be to support that mission, not to make myself look good, not to necessarily make my team look good, but to support the mission of the company. Absolutely. Yeah, I just, I, to me, it's been such a no-brainer and I've encountered so many times uh, dealing with folks who outwardly will tell you how much I support the troops, I do this and that. And then the guys come home and it's, well, I've got these weird biases that would prevent me from wanting this guy on my team. And, and I'm not even really sure of all of the ways that we, we can work to end that bias because the, the reality is if I'm out searching and a guy comes in and I know that he's had experience in the military, had that military training, um, whether he was a logistics guy, he was a cook, he was a, a, a engineer, he was a guy who fixed diesel engines, repaired, all of those things are, are under such progressive, strong training programs of constant self-improvement and rank advancement. How could somebody pass up on that? It, it, it baffles me. I, I don't understand it either. And one thing that I was reminded of when you were speaking was constant improvement, the value of feedback. As veterans, we got relentless feedback all the time. So in naval aviation, okay, there was a brief before every flight and a debrief after every flight. And then we were told after every single flight, we talked about our performance and what we did, what went well and what didn't go. Right. And then through that feedback, that constant feedback is what made me better. And we did a bunch of things where we sort of took our rank off the table because, you know, I as a young lieutenant in the squadron flew with the commanding officer who's 10, 15 years my senior. He made a mistake and I made him aware of it. And there were no consequences. He looked at me and said, I, I did what? I go, yeah, you, you did that. He goes, wow. He goes, that was dangerous. I go, yes, sir, it was. He goes, well, thanks for mentioning that. I, I was completely unaware of that, of that, and I need to make sure that I never do that again because I failed you, right? Like, I don't think you failed me, sir, but, you know, you scared me. Anyway, so you laid that out on the table, and if I, a brand-new lieutenant in my, first tour in, in my first year in the squadron, can teach someone or help someone 10 to 15 years my senior become better, Mm -hmm. And that's what I was, and that again, in turn, helped me become better as well. Yeah. So we understand the value of feedback because we got relentless feedback to all of us during our careers. I would imagine. So I just think any organization that starts its core tenant 
on its respect for its people, knowing that people that are respected and, and are, are looked at for, for their growth and their future, it's just such a perfect fit. If you're one of those companies that you look at your employees as dispensable and replaceable, then it's a different story. And I could, I could see why you wouldn't want a veteran because you wouldn't really want anyone who, of character. You want somebody that's, that's going to do a job and right. get out, which would never be a client of mine. I, you know, I've almost had almost 100% of my conversations with people who ask me about my service or about my experience in the military ended with, wow, I had no idea, or yep. wow, I really didn't know that, or I never thought about it that way. Mm -hmm. So that goes to, again, building relationships with people, talking, asking veterans about their experience. And I guarantee you, you'll walk away, you know, having go have, with a new appreciation for the things of which that person is capable. Yeah. The other side of it is, in, in, just to clarify, just because somebody is a veteran doesn't necessarily mean they're qualified for the job and, and a good person. They're, oh. they don't, they don't, you know, it's, it's, you know, we're talking in stereotypes. It's, it's kind of like saying oh, anyone yeah. who's from that city is a crook. No, it's, it, there are people in that city who are. So it still requires the same background, the same cultural fit, all of those things. But I think that, you know, if you're looking at the laws of probability, finding somebody who came out of the service from any of the disciplines, uh, those disciplines and, and the learning can be converted very quickly into a, a very good functioning, if that person fits the culture of your organization. Right. But you have to make up your mind about people. I mean, there are some bad people. Uh, yeah. veterans and not, right? I mean, yeah. you know, I, I flew airplanes in the Navy. A lot of my colleagues went on to become airline pilots. And, you know, I still check the flight deck of every aircraft that I get on because there's a couple of guys I'm looking for. To make, sure <laughs> you know? to make sure you don't get on that plane. Uh, that's right. It's like, I'm out, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's Bob. No way. I'm, oh, yeah, going, exactly. I'm going somewhere else. Hey, <laughs> you know, the other part of this conversation that, that now that we've inspired everyone that, that hopefully we've inspired everyone that that their preconceived notions may be faulty. If I wanted to do a, a, an actual search to bring veterans into my organization, what are some of the organizations out there that help companies find these qualified guys to, to, to consider them for, for employment? Well, let me say this. There are many, and a Google search will lead to a lot of results. And so I, I, I don't necessarily want to mention any because I'm afraid of leaving something out I, I will say this, there are so a lot of there are also a lot of very large companies that are really focused on hiring veterans. So some of the defense contractors, for instance, um, you know, I am in Seattle, so there's a large software company here that uh, that has a very good program uh, as far as helping veterans go. There's another very, very, very large company that delivers packages to everyone headquartered here, and they have a very large uh, program revolve around hiring veterans um, as well. So a Google search will, will lend fruitful results as far as uh, what those things are. And there, and there are some of my former veterans who have, uh, some of my fellow veterans, I, would, I should say, who have set up consulting businesses and so forth to help just companies just with that or to help smaller companies uh, reach out and hire more veterans and recognize the value of hiring veterans as well. Yeah, I think the goal of this particular recording today, the reason that I brought you on is just to encourage anyone out there who's looking to find talented people to work in the organization. If you don't at least consider and reach out and try to tap into this amazing resource of really qualified trained people you're missing the boat. And that's really the message of what we're, what we're trying to do in this, in this conversation today. So, you know, it's just the bias. If you do have a bias, I would, I would implore people to try to understand where that bias came from and then maybe reconsider it. And you can do that by creating relationships and or talking with veterans. And, and I think creating those relationships and having those conversations should, you know, relieve that bias. Yeah. And also watching one less Rambo movie helps too. 
or that. I, you know, I watch those movies. They're fun, but I also realize they're movies and not everything. You know, just like every every police officer probably cringes when they watch movies about the police. You know, I I, I love Top Gun, but I kind of cringe at the concept because I mean, it's it's kind of all wrong. I like, you know, none of that would ever happen in the Navy, but I was still entertained. I got gotcha. you. So, Ron, if someone wanted to reach out to you to know more, how what's the best way to find you? Uh, I am on LinkedIn. I love LinkedIn as a platform, you know, Ron Higgs, pretty simple. And uh, reach out to me on LinkedIn. Uh, and I'm open to new connections. I am pretty active in uh, chatting with, with, uh, with some of my colleagues, yourself included. So find me on LinkedIn and connect. Yeah, that's, that's where we met was LinkedIn and through through a couple of the networking groups that we're both both members of. Yeah, I, I will say this about, tw- you know, everybody, you know, 2020, everybody's ready for 2020 to be over. But I, I have to tell you, I've made probably more meaningful relationships in 2020 than any other year that I have. And especially with people with whom I've never met in person. I mean, I consider you a friend uh, and we would probably catch up like we were old buds when we do get to meet, but we've yet to meet face to face, you know? Yeah, as far as you know, I don't have a body below the midsection. That's Same. All I've ever seen. <laughs> uh, all I see is your Zoom shirt. Yeah, my Zoom shirt. So, hey, I really appreciate you coming on today. Is there is there anything about vets that I didn't ask you that I should have? You know, I mean, pretty thorough. I mean, there's lots of stuff we pretty we could have covered, but here here's the thing. You know, there are a lot of things that you know, vets, you know, vets are good for leadership. They understand leadership, they understand teamwork, and I think they have an inherent bias for uh, improving the organization. But what I would like people to walk away from, uh, again, every veteran is as unique as all of us human beings are. Everyone has a story. My 24 years in the Navy is completely different from someone's 10 years in the Army again, completely different from someone's, you know, four years in the Air Force. So veteran is a ubiquitous term, but all of our experiences are vastly different. That's fantastic. I I really appreciate the friendship. I appreciate you coming on and these insights, I hope lead to someone going, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to look at vets and I'm going to hire and get the benefit of those guys in my organization. I think, I think if that's the outcome of this podcast today, we win. Well, thank you. And, and I hope the same. I really do. If it makes a difference in one veteran's life, then it will have been worth it. Fantastic. Have a great one. And for those of you watching, thanks so much for tuning in. Remember to tell a friend, subscribe, like, uh, heck, send a fax to an old guy to tell him that he should get a computer and watch this podcast. And we will be back with another edition very soon. Have a great one and good luck. Brought to you by Fangle Technologies, where we help you convert every person your company touches into a voracious advocate for your brand.